One of our favorite sponsors is back with us. Sunset Lake CBD. CBD. Yeah. If you're looking for CBD that actually does what CBD is supposed to do, look no further than our friends over at Sunset Lake. Let me break it down. Break it down, Mel. They're sustainably farmed, meaning they avoid pesticides and use sustainable farming practices to preserve the land for future generations. One. Two, farm to table. They ship the CBD products straight from their door in Vermont directly to your door, wherever you're at. Oh, that's cool. And third party tested. They test everything with the third party to ensure quality, dosage, and safety. You got to go over and check out sunsetlakecbd.com. They have so many products. Break it down for them, Apple. Well, they've got some new stuff going on. Like they, they always had pre rolls, but now they got really cool packaging for it. And you can get CBD pre roll flights of all their flavors. You can get the heavy hitter flight that also throws in some of their Keith blunts. They have a new CBD recovery body lotion. I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. And what was the other? The, the other one with Arnica. Yeah. Extra strength muscle rub, 3,000 milligram with 5% lidocaine. So look, oh, yeah, lidocaine. if you're sore, this is the stuff you want to rub on your body to make those aches and pains go away. They even have CBD infused coffee. So you can have coffee without the little jitter that you get from caffeine and you have it in the morning and you start your day off right. Your body feels lubricated. Or you're, you know, you're going to sleep good. Yeah. It's- and also they have... If you kind of forget to reorder, they've got subscriptions. And they're given the No Simple Road family 20% off. 20% off. Put in the promo, promo code. code NSR20 when you're checking out at sunsetlakecbd.com. You're going to get 20% off your entire order. NSR20. And don't forget those cute little gummy bears. That's right. Sunsetlakecbd.com. One of our favorite sponsors is back. Wake up to find out that you should be on the beach April 19th through the 23rd down in Ventura, California for what? Skull and Roses, Skull everybody. Skull and Roses. Skull and Roses. <laughs> At the very famous and hallowed ground of the Ventura County Raceway Fairgrounds. What? And you know what? It's on the beach, just like Apple used to say. It's it five is. days of festivities, Grateful Dead, inspired music. It's a... Uh, it's a cornea, veritable cornucopia uh, of a, deadhead A special love. 420 celebration. That's right. You know, if you're one of those people that likes costumes like Mel. Yeah, I there, love them. There's the Chinese New Year. There's the uh, Mardi, Mardi Gras, Gras. There's a whole, each day has a thing. Like Apple said, the 420 celebration. There's a new bigger shakedown this year. There's places for you to cool off out there. There's even, uh, if you were there last year, like the layout of the whole festival is different this year. So look. This is going to be amazing. We're going to be there. Dark Star Orchestra, Phil Lesh and Friends, Boombox. Who Dark else? Star Orchestra. <laughs> Just <laughs> say that. I like Dark Star Orchestra. Yeah, Why can't we say it twice? Circles Around the Sun. Garcia Birthday Leftover Band. Leftover Salmon. Dogs Latin in the Pile. Dead. Oh. Stu Allen and Mars Hotel. And a whole bunch more. Go to SkullandRoses.com and grab your tickets now. There are single day tickets available, but hey, you should get the whole shebang so you don't miss out on any of the fun. It sucks to have FOMO. And I know when I haven't gone to this back in the day, I was feeling like I missed out. So don't miss out. Come hang out with us. Come hang out with the Grateful Dead family. Come get yourself some shakedown stuff, some goods, you know, from the lot and spend some time April 19th through the 23rd at Skull and Roses. SkullandRoses.com. There's a parking kitty, so why not have a venue llama? Why not? You yeah. should we, okay, that we do. You should check this out. It's a new site in the works by a couple of heads. Llama tell you about it. Ew. See, see what I did there? <laughs> oh, <laughs> called, I get it's it. It's called VenueLlama.com, and it's an online, online resource that provides live music fans with the insider venue info they need. So this is like the Yelp for venues, but done by heads. So like if well, you well done if, by music lovers right so like if you want to know how the security is at Hampton or like if you've been to Hampton and you know what the security is like you can go to Venue Llama and put it in there and rate the venue you can even like say where the sound is the best inside what are great places to eat basically what's a good place you're giving to stay. us tips and tricks on how to visit this venue so VenueLlama.com launches in late spring, but they're currently doing a sneak peek for No Simple Road listeners. Head over to VenueLlama.com to sign up for your free Llama account to start rating and sharing your insider venue info today. Llamas can also list their favorite scene-friendly businesses, websites, or podcasts on the Venue Llama Friends page. And 
It's currently compiling its llama base with as much helpful information as possible on venues for the following upcoming tours, which is Dead and Company Fish, Widespread Panic, Billy Strings, and Goose. Head over to check out the exclusive beta version on Venue Llama today at VenueLlama.com forward slash NSR. Check this out. This is something that if you do any traveling or you go to any venues that you've never been to before, you're going to use this all the time. So please go over there and sign up for an account. VenueLlama.com forward slash NSR. You'd be glad you did it. Trust me. Our Grateful Dead family is serving up some of the best food in the Portland area and the Denver area. Two locations in Denver, three locations in Portland, Fire on the Mountain. They're serving up the best chicken fingers, pizzas, salads, burgers, and treats, and amazing vegan options at all these locations. And and listen, if you go there and don't have dessert, you're blowing it. Trust me when I tell you, deep fried cheesecake, deep fried Oreos, this is the best of the best. You don't even have to get deep fried that um oatmeal cookie oh, yeah, that, that oatmeal I had was amazing. Was so fucking good. It was good. for the table. And <laughs> Yeah, you always got to get an oatmeal cookie for the for table. The table. <laughs> Look, here's the thing. If you don't want to go eat like chicken fingers and french fries and onion rings, they have plenty of salads. They've got amazing vegan options. And if you're not in one of these states like Portland, Oregon, or Denver, Colorado, where Fire on the Mountain is, you can go to portlandwings.com. You can order sauces. You can get Portland, <laughs> Portland Wings. You can get fire on the mountain <laughs> swag. Uh, my head's all over the place right now. I don't know what's wrong You're with myself. You're thinking of chicken wings. I am fire on chicken the wings. So everybody, check this out. The Grateful Dead family puts love and intention into everything they do. Fire on the mountain is no exception. When you go there, you're going to taste the love in the food. Go check it out. Fire on the mountain. Speaking of the Grateful Dead family, our family over at Shop Tour Bus. Shop Tour Bus. Shop Tour Bus. Are creating some of the <laughs> dopest Grateful Dead inspired merchandise on the online lot or they the really lot are. in the real world. It doesn't matter. They have the best shit in. As I scroll and world. see all of the designs that they've done, the Let It Grow, the Ship of Fools, the other one, Loser, Shakedown, they are, each one is better than the last and the last one was the best. That I have to agree with you. And my favorite thing about them is it's not too on the nose. If you don't know what we're talking about, go over to shoptourbus.com and you can also check it out at shoptourbus on Instagram at these designs are Grateful Dead songs told in the form of pictures. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, when you see it, you're going to be like, oh, that's really cool. And you know what else is really cool? It comes to you in a hand design, one of a kind box or an all over print box. It's up to you. you got to ask. And then it comes with all kinds of extras in there, too. And some of you are going to get a Grateful Dead bootleg. bootleg. That's right. Your order. And you're getting free shipping. So put in the promo code No Simple Road, all one word when you check out. At shoptourbus.com. They're going to give you free shipping. What Apple? Also, also, today is Friday. You have until the end of today if you want to get on there. They're doing spring cleaning, 30% off their hoodies. That's, look, these are the softest, oh most comfortable hoodies on the planet. I'm not just saying that. Aaron's a hoodie addict, so I, he knows. Yeah, I have a serious hoodie problem. Well, and he got me a hoodie, and it was, it not was, it is my favorite hoodie. It's one it's like warm enough, but it's also lightweight. So it's perfect from the winter into spring. So you have an extended life of wearing this hoodie. There it is. Shoptourbus.com. Put in the promo code No Simple Road. Hey everyone, Chris Pandolfi from the infamous String Dusters here to let you know that my podcast Inside the Musician's Brain is back on the airwaves for season four, which means it's time once again to get deep with influential musicians from all across the musical landscape to really understand and translate the lessons of success, failure, inspiration, and hard work that are behind the music and the artists that we love. My guests this season include Rachel Price from Lake Street Dives, Sam Bush, Chris Wood, Chris Funk from The Decemberists, Lindsay Liu, MC Taylor from His Golden Messenger, and more. Check us out, and thanks for listening. We're so excited to tell you a bit about today's sponsor, Music Masters Collective. They are a nonprofit organization that produces unique music events, providing opportunities for fans and artists to meet and collaborate in an inspired and creative atmosphere. Music Masters Collective events give you the opportunity to learn from world class musicians like Otil Burbridge, Steve Earle, Richard Thompson, former members of the band, 
the Mel Carton kids, Nikki Glaspy, the Fab Foe, and Sean Colvin, and so many more. At an event like the Milk Carton Kids Sad Song Summer Camp happening this July, you can expect immersive classes, evenings of entertainment, excellent food, and a space for a lucky group of folks to learn, co-write, workshop, and perform with like-minded peers, all with the guidance of Kenneth Pattengale, Joey Ryan, and some of their favorite songwriters. This all-inclusive week in the Catskill Mountains of upstate New York is guaranteed to be magical. Scholarships are available and spots are extremely limited. So visit www.sadsongsummercamp.com forward slash simple to learn more. That's www.sadsongsummercamp.com forward slash simple. Check it out. No Simple Road family, it's Aaron. And Mel. And Apple. Apple, what are you doing on your phone, man? I'm communicating with Corey. Producer with, Corey. With producer Corey. He wanted to know if I know any heady glass artists. <laughs> <laughs> I told him earlier, if anybody in the world knew heady glass artists, it'd be you. So, I mean, I know of some, but I just text as like, I know, I know several people are apprenticing with like heady glass folk. Yeah. Do you, do you guys out there know any heady glass folk? I'm just saying. Welcome back to the No Simple Road <laughs> Weekly Rewind, done in collaboration with the Edible, Edible Beats. Beats. The Edible Beats. Out of Denver, Colorado. They are changing the way Denver that CEO. you do food and community and fun and drinks and do life. Food. <laughs> do. They do food. They do it. They, they not only do food, they change the way that you have your experience when you're eating said food so just saying that's a this big is deal the biggest build up to going to denver for it's, dick's weekend that there ever will be <laughs> no, I, I don't know because we keep talking about the edible beats and we had that incredible conversation with justin last year and got so excited and we haven't been to denver since then and we That's are true. so it is I, at least up. i am i know apple is just oh, I like totally am I, that like emotion and excitement for like come on i just want to go i want to do it, <laughs> i want to eat i things. know you guys do too it's one of my favorite things to share with friends and family to get them addicted to edible beets of looking like my dad ordered the the zine the, the zine and has made several of the things he said the ribs were fantastic he's made them a couple times oh really oh really yeah and see, and, I'm not that I, big of a foodie, but I, totally, I love a good I, meal. I already know what I want from like each of the restaurants. I know <laughs> we can't go to all. We're not going to have enough time to go to all of them. It's going to be Ophelia's, bro. I, 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 I got Luca. My friend, I was talking to Luca yesterday. I got him hooked. He was on the Instagram because like, he's a paella fan like me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, go to L5 on Instagram and look at these dishes. <laughs> and he was like, what? The well, fuck? like Mel said, and you said, you know, sharing this with other people is the thing. And getting the opportunity to share our relationship with the edible beats with all of you live at Ophelia's is going to be monumental for, yes. for this community. I'm yeah. just saying like, absolutely it's a big deal. It's like introducing your best girl to your family or something. You know what I mean? Or, or like your wow. super dope friend that you've, been hanging out with that none of your other friends know and you finally get to all hang out together and go to a show like that's what us performing at ophelia's will be for no simple road that's yeah i'm super excited man i we get to perform break bread like literally and then we're gonna we're not staying it now but we're planning some dope collaborations too yeah we don't know what they're gonna be yet but just stay tuned we'll keep you we'll keep you in the loop as to how that develops it'll be a night to remember it will definitely be a night to remember and it's going to be during the or around the time of the dicks run. So yeah, 
Mark your calendars tentatively. Labor Day weekend. One of those days. Right. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you know what, what shakes out there. But yeah, man, we're um we're gearing up for another wild summer and uh, spring and April is going to be jam packed and we're off to the races and uh, it's, it feels good, man. It finally, like this week was the first day that like the sun actually came out here in Portland. And and when I say that two days, yeah, if you live somewhere else, you're like, Oh, you're exaggerating, Aaron. No, I'm actually not. It's been cloudy here since October, basically. So we've had a few here and there days. Few. Yeah, not not literally, like the, not like the a last few. two though. Uh-uh. The last, the last couple of two days. was like Mother Nature giving us a little sneak preview. Like, remember me? Yeah, what with the, like you? sexy sundress on, <laughs> and like like hey, me and me and Mel crushed it Friday. And like, oh yeah, did we a total did. spring clean. It was the first day we were able to like turn off the heat, open up all the windows, let the house air out, clean like like deep cleaning the house felt like like a maid service came through here when i when we first moved here it was in the summer and i realized like in comparison to where we were las vegas that people were very active like in the very spring, in the spring a- and summer yeah in this well i'm talking about the summer specifically yeah. but in the spring when we first moved here or i'm sorry in the summer when we first moved here and like I didn't understand it because I wasn't a native yet. I didn't understand what the urgency was <laughs> or like why the it was so important. Yeah, what's so special? It. So what? It's summertime because I had my Vegas mentality. Like what? The sun's always here. The no. Summer's gonna last for no, nine months. It, it's mm. insane. And what I was gonna say about that was like being back at work. Today's an, another gloomy day, but always on the heels of a nice day everybody's always talking about did you catch that weather did you go outside was it nice did you walk your dog like <laughs> every you do? did you in your garden everybody's like the gardening and and it's just really cool for an entire like community that's not like a music community or a specific just like well, a, lo- grocery store. a life community yeah. um to have that in common where everybody's like excited to get in their garden beds and excited and it, to walk the it dog is, and- it is exciting up here i was excited this morning i told aaron and cody i was like we have the new batch of squirrels Who's cody huh? cody i never from, get you know, to the see other, him anymore the other half of the other half of geriatrics <laughs> right they were jamming today uh but I was telling them, we, the, like the squirrel, like everything's coming to life. We've started to see moths in the evening. He said mm-hmm. the honeybees are coming out. Oh, cool. We have four new baby squirrels that were chasing each other. One of them's like a blackish red. He's different than all the others. He's a, he's a demon squirrel. I, I already, he's a black I already dubbed him Flash. I already dubbed him like Flash because he's got like a red tint to flash, him. Flash, Flash, 100 yard dash. Uh huh. <laughs> so it, it's exciting when spring starts up here. When, it is. when we very first moved up here, one of the first um, visitors to our house was my friend Dave, and him and I have been friends almost as long as me and Apple. Not quite, but almost. And uh, he lives in Eugene, and when we moved up to Portland, him and I reconnected, and he came up and visited. And we were taking the dog for a walk, and uh, it was you know my first spring here, and he was like, hey... Just so you know, like around here, when you see the daffodils coming yeah. up, that's how you know spring is coming. And I had never experienced anything like that. And Mel and I took the dog yesterday because it was sunny out. And that's what you do now when the sun comes out. You take the dog for a walk. Also, we had a really big dinner. Amazing dinner. And we needed to walk yeah. it off. And Darwin okay. went for a walk. That yeah. makes me happy. And uh, we were walking down by our neighbor's house and there was a bunch of daffodils coming up. And I was like, oh, look, Mel, it's time. It's coming. And it's dope up here because they grow they're on the side of the highway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're daffodils. They're we like, were giving daffodils at work today away. I, I never knew anything about any of that stuff when we lived in Vegas. I didn't know what a daffodil a was daffodil? versus a high hy- hyacinth versus freaking hydrangeas. Yeah, none of that. <laughs> so that all that to say, I I wanna talk to you guys this happy week. Spring. Yeah, happy, happy spring. Yeah, happy spring. I want to talk to you guys this week about change. Change. Yeah. Quarters, nickels. Okay. Um, Half dollars, silver dollars. Pennies. No. Um, It can be, uh, this time of year is this other time of year when people start making resolutions. Obviously, New Year's is when. Really? Yeah. 
I didn't know that for real. Like I didn't know that. Yeah. New Year's is when everybody's like, I'm making my New Year's resolution. I'm going to stop eating candy or yeah. whatever the fuck. I'm going to start exercising every but day. But in springtime, people are like, oh, it, summer's almost here. I'm going to, I'm going to start going to the gym for my beach body. And, you know, people start making like Plan, hot girl planning. summer. Yeah. That planning kind of for different shit. I, exactly. I didn't know about this truly. Yeah. That's a thing. And it can, it, I guess what my question is, when you finally realize that, like, okay, there's something in your life that you've identified that, like, isn't serving you, right? And it's, maybe it's not, like, causing you ill or, but it's something that you need to change. What are, what are your, like, do you have a practical method that you go through to try and like um make the change happen because i know i know for me there's there's like i i have i have an example okay why don't you give your example to give so that we could have a better understanding yeah (laughs) so I, i talked about this a while back um on the show maybe during the holidays just after I was really, really struggling with like body image and diet stuff. And like, if I'm being honest, like in, in a depression, but didn't realize that's what I was dealing with. Like just because it was the first time or cause just because I don't know. It definitely wasn't the fucking first time I've been dealing with this shit ever since I was a teenager. But I just didn't realize that I was depressed. No, what I meant was not the body image part about the teenager. What I meant was like, because like it was the first time you were dealing with depression, like that you knew about it or. No, no, it it was just, I just realized it. It wasn't, I, I remember when too, I was out on the porch, you had left for work. It was. 4.35 Four thirty, five of four forty-five in the morning, or five o'clock in the morning, or whatever. Five forty-five. Thank you. Five forty-five. That's when I leave. It was dark. It was raining outside. The sun wasn't going to come up until like eight thirty, eight o'clock, and I wasn't leaving to go anywhere. And I was just sitting out there, and I felt so sad, and like angry at myself, and alone in how I felt. Even though that, like, I live with three other people well, and a dog, it didn't matter. I think that's what depression that's does. That's a sign like, of depression. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter who's around. When you're around. surrounded by people who love you and you feel alone. Yep. Mm-hmm. And and I, I was like, oh, shit. This, what I'm feeling right now is depression. And what's making me feel depressed is the way I feel about myself. And I, the reason I'm feeling like this is because I'm not <gasps> doing anything to make myself feel better. And for me, it's a, um, a vicious cycle of realizing or not realizing that, uh, I get angry with myself and then my fuckets kick in case of the fuckets. And then my, my fuckets case of the muckets. Yeah. And then my (laughs) fuckets make me feel like shit about myself. And then it, it's like a, self-cycle perpetuating cycle of keeps you there a loop a feedback loop and and it's also like really uh old negative self-talk programming that's running in my head that i hadn't identified and um actually you know what this is a a couple of weeks after new year's okay and uh i was like I'm not taking care of myself. I'm eating like shit. I feel like shit about myself. I don't like the way I look. I'm like low key or high key embarrassed, you know, like period. And, um, I need to do something about it. (laughs) And for me, like it can be something small that breaks the cycle. So what I decided to do was, Back in January. Yeah. Was to start taking my vitamins again because I had stopped and uh, just doing that, waking up in the morning, 
um, taking two or three different vitamins that I like to take broke me out of that cycle of feeling like I wasn't doing something about it. Right. And then once a little tiny bit of momentum, uh, uh, just the tiniest bit. And once that started, I was like, Oh shit, I'm missing exercise. And then I started exercising again. And once I did that, I was like, Oh shit, I'm not eating good. And then that cha- you know what I mean? Like one thing kind of incrementally led to another. So for me, it was when I asked you guys, like, is there anything that you do, like steps that you take? Mm. For me, it was just doing one small incremental anything change toward the t- direction that you're, you know, feeling to break me out yeah. of the cycle of feeling helpless and at the mercy of my own negative program that plays in my head or that played in my head. And, and also like watching the uh, Jonah Hill documentary about his Stuts. Stuts, watching that made a huge impact on me too. Not so much like if you've seen it, he, he has all of these, um, what does he call them? things that like the little cards and I don't know what he calls them. I I forgot. I can't remember what they are, but anyway, these little things that he does to help him get through the day. It wasn't so much any of that. It was seeing Jonah Hill take out a cardboard cutout of himself when he was a teenager and heavy and saying that like, he felt like that guy was what was holding him back. And he was embarrassed of him and that he had to like overcome that and befriend that person. Yeah. And like treat that little sweetheart that was getting bullied by all those people that are making fun of his weight and his braces and how he looked. And he was doing it too. And and inside. covering it up with self, <clears throat> self-deprecating humor. And well, when that's I, the guy that needed the love. Right. Yeah. Right. So when I saw that, <clears throat> It made me realize that I, you were doing a version of that. I totally was doing that. Like whenever I would like think of that time, I would be like, fuck that guy. Like what a wimp, you know what I mean? What a worthless, like, and now like when I'm at the gym, I picture that kid running with me and like, come on, man, we're doing this together. You know what I mean? Cause, and it helped, it's helped me to like move past all that shit. So I say all that to say, well, you're telling your story yeah, too. It's just the one incremental thing of like, okay, I'm going to wake up and take my vitamins. There was a story I heard about a guy that was like, I think I might've talked about this on the show before a guy that was super miserable at work. He was working from oh. home and he started microdosing LSD. And the integration coach was like, wow, you really seem different. Like what, what happened? He's like, man, I had a breakthrough. And the coach was like, whoa, what happened? He's like, well, I've been microdosing LSD and working from home, been really miserable. And I put on socks. And the guy was like, what the fuck are you talking? You put on socks. He's like, I realized that my feet were cold and it's been making me miserable. And I put on socks and my days have been a thousand times better. I have more energy. I'm happier. Thing. One little thing made the hugest difference. So for me, it was, it's just doing something as opposed to nothing that can break me out of that cycle. What, what about you, Mel? What is a city without its music? The legacy of the New York Philharmonic is incredible. Nearly two centuries of history. That's a lot of music and a lot of stories. I was sitting on stage for the very first time thinking, I can't quite believe this is happening. Join me, Jamie Bernstein, as we explore the history of the New York Philharmonic. It's the NY Phil story made in New York, a podcast about a city, its people, and their orchestra. Listen wherever you get podcasts. I have to agree with the small gesture um, because it's not, they may be a bold small gesture, like like something that has been bothering me, and it kind of still does bother me. Um is that when I worked back in Las Vegas, I had 
so many opportunities to take classes and learn a lot. Um, when I was an esthetician, there was always like, um, you know, other estheticians or, um, reps that had, you know, different product lines that would come in and teach classes. Or if we learned new treatments, we had to have somebody come in and train us on these treatments. Um, also there was like an opportunity to have my tuition reimbursed. So if anything I wanted to learn about, I just went ahead and did it. And when I moved here, that all went away and I didn't realize it, how much confidence that learning gave me when I, the further away I got from living in Las Vegas and not taking classes, the less confident I became in myself. Mm. And it bothered me a lot. And it's like I said, it's not all the way gone. It still bothers me um, because I, if I don't feel like I'm learning anything, I don't feel like I'm growing. And so I had to realize that, you know, first of all, I can't make a blanket statement like that about myself because I'm always learning something no matter what. But it's like, it's, my, it was my context. Like that was how I, I felt like I was learning. I could, I could measure it. I could use my skills that I had learned pre- on the previous day on a client the next day, you mm-hmm. know? And so I would have a practice or, you know, now, um, I, it doesn't feel that way. And also my interests have changed. The things that I want to learn about are different. And so something that I did recently was reached out to one of my friends and um took a online class with her we just made our own appointment and we started um doing the facial diagnosis and that's something that I had been wanting to learn about that she's really astute at and really good at and that day that we made that appointment and and we stuck to it because for whatever reason we had to cancel the first one um but like after that I felt like I was on cloud nine I felt like there's no way that I could learn that entire facial diagnosis and and it's a lifelong journey yeah. to do that. But it's like learning acupuncture. Or it's something. like learning the banjo. I'll, right. You'll always have to practice it. Which you'll always did the hit. thing that opened it. You started. Yes. It's I started it and I it made me realize like you're always learning but you have to do something to make like me personally I have to like apply something I have to like so the next you know the next day I went to work and I was talking to my boss about it and I was like do you want me to do your your facial diagnosis I need practice and she was like sure so (laughs) she's your boss is great and she sent me pictures and stuff like that and I've been working on it and stuff and then I took pictures of Apple and I'm still you know learning so it's taking me a while but like it started something in me that made me realize that I'm not stagnant. And that's what I was feeling like. I felt like I was stagnant and like, I'm not using all of the knowledge that I had learned before. So that's not going anywhere. And I'm also not learning anything new because I'm, there's nothing to apply it's it like to. It's all shelved. Exactly. And, and that's how I feel. I feel irrelevant. Like, it made you feel like that. Yeah. It made me feel like that. Like, it's like your favorite doll from when you were five. Like, who cares about what, her now? What made you even able to identify that that was a thing, that that was the thing that was the learning part? Yeah. It's been bothering me for years since I moved here. It's like, a, like if you have a problem with your, your weight or your, your appearance, that's bothers me also because you're very smart. Like you're a very intelligent person and you learn very easily and it's not that I'm comparing anything to you, but like that is, I've always been attracted to that. That's one of the things I'm very attracted to with you and the fact that you can pick up anything and just like learn about stuff. And like, especially like with, um, with the show, like, Oh, I need to learn how to, you know, these new mics we got. And then you'll read about it, learn about it, input it into the computer and you just do it. And it was, again, like I said, like, I'm not comparing myself to you, but that's like looking at you as something that makes enforces in me that that's not what I'm doing. Do you know what I'm saying? It it underscores that that that's not what you're doing. And so 
even just like what another thing that I did to get out of it was find my banjo teacher and like the thing that you do about like you were saying how you would um do like negative feedback loops to yourself yeah. what I would do is like I would disappoint myself so that I could keep that loop going so I would like cancel my class with my banjo teacher for no good reason and like I could have done it I could have scheduled whatever else I had around it but I would so that I wouldn't get better or I would straight up self-sabotage yeah yeah that's I mean you know it because you know yeah I I that's that's what that's my um that's one of the things that I have to work through as being Melanie like that's a constant thing for me it's not um I'm sharing it now, but it's not new to to myself. Well, I, I, I'm just I, sharing it. Like you know I remember, I, mean? I remember you saying the other day, like <clears throat> you remember your mom saying that you weren't, you're not the artist. Oh yeah. Or you're you're not a musician, and that sabotage, right? So then, well, I think that my mom would. <laughs> You know, it's like when you see your kid and they're definitely not the athlete and you're like, buddy, maybe try to pick up an instrument, you know, like (laughs) you don't mean it mean because you want to see your kids succeed as your parent and you're trying to get them to maybe focus their energy on something that they can see, um, you know, like something come to fruition. But it that shit's hurtful and it stays with you forever, you mm-hmm. know? And, like, I my mom saying that to me. Like, also, like, lately there's so, so many things that my mom has said in my childhood that, that I am working through. I think 2023 is a year of, like, uprooting all of those um, things that were said to me. I was talking to her the other day about it. She doesn't even remember some of that stuff. And some of that stuff is etched in my mind forever. Never forget. Yeah, exactly. So like, it's not even her problem. It's my, it's my thing, you know? And so I just, um, I, I really value intelligence a lot and I value that in myself. And I don't mean like I need to be the smartest person in the room. I just mean like, constant learning is something that to me is sexy and beautiful okay. and exciting intelligence is attractive. and yeah and you know you were looking at pictures the other day and you were like look at me and i've always seen you the same way period it's crazy i've always seen i'm don't get me wrong i know that you know you're bigger or smaller or whatever but like it doesn't it seem doesn't like yeah, it, it's still the same. It doesn't person. phase me. It doesn't like shock me. It, it none of it. It's like your brain's always been there, and that to me is the best part. Wow. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, the brain and the heart. But yeah, and the, yeah, the exactly. The, the inside stuff. What I love the inside stuff. So I guess my my long long winded answer was I put myself out and I made myself follow through and and like, hey, Sarah. How about, you know, the 13th at 2 p.m.? I can't do two. How about three? Okay, let's do it. So then for you, booking it. It was more of a like, I'm buckling down. Yeah. I know how to buckle down on myself. I, I can do cold turkey stuff. I'd be like, no, you're fucking waking up at 4 a.m. now and that's it. And you just, I, I know how to do that to myself. I know how <laughs> yeah, to <you> like, do. <laughs> to a fault. It's, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's very extreme. Like, as extreme as I am, like, lackadaisical and like lighthearted and fun, I can Balance. literally m- militant and fucking put my hair in a tightest ponytail with no give and be like, no, you're doing this. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. It's like from Dominatrix to like Got Mickey Mouse. Like, that is fun. Yeah. And then he's like, you better fucking sit down and shut the fuck up. Do you want the restraint? It's, yeah. it's how I was raised. And like, as crazy as I talk about like my childhood, my mom's craziness did help me to gear my, like, pull my shit together. That's, that's how I have that. It, it, it's so, it's. I'm learning how to not make it like. I'm learning how to use it instead of it being, be, a detriment. being yes, exactly. Like wield it instead of like it hurt my 30 years where I could have been it hurt my singing. feelings 30 years. Yeah. Ago. Like um, my feelings are still hurt. Like, no bitch, just buy yourself an instrument and practice and get yourself a teacher. Take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, how much a day, like do it. 
And so that's like, I'm still learning that like as, mm. at 44 years old, I'm still learning how to um, balance my um, very extreme ways of like behavior. Mm change and that, go ahead apple oh it's just well that stuff's crazy like you're saying a lot of things that really hurt us and we drag with us our whole lives i went through that with my dad years ago of bringing stuff up I mean, it wasn't a lot of terrible time but the times i brought up he's like i don't even remember doing that i'm so sorry mm-hmm. like like yeah the other day when like, i mentioned you, you that. have it in your mind for years it's like they fucking did that to yeah me. like they like ugh. they intentionally and and it's like it was in passing they yeah. had a bad day exactly they yelled at their Apple. kid exactly. well that's something that i said to to our kids several times is like hey look i'm me and your mom are just other human beings on the planet we are not special we don't have a guidebook on how to be parents there's no we don't know what the hell we're doing with the answers we are doing the best we can so if we've made mistakes i'm sorry yeah like if we there's are anything trying, upsetting you. Yeah. Tell well, me. Well, when I mentioned that to my mom the other day, she was like, I never said that. Like, not even like um trying to deny it. She was like, like literally, literally like, didn't I remember. Never, I never said that. I was like, Yeah, you did, mom. I will never forget that. Well, I didn't mean that. <laughs> and I was like, Well, I just want you to know that it's taken me this long to realize that you were wrong, and then also this long to like undo that and now i'm finding my artistry Jesus, man that well that also comes from kind of like an older mindset too of that like you know you you know wake up you got to make money like the, the yeah. little cartoon my dad sent me <laughs> with the you know i want to grow up and be a musician and dad looks at him and goes we well, can't do both son <laughs> you know, you know like that whole mentality me of, that. of like of like artists are not you know like you yeah you better have a backup plan you well, need to become an accountant well too and straight or up my mom was a very talented um artist and her her dad was not about it and just put it down and didn't want her to do that and i learned this the other day through that same conversation that my mom always wanted to be a cartoonist and i never knew that and she would draw what? cartoons all the time when I was little, really? like yeah. Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Smurfs, Care Bears, like she always would do that. And then she ended up going to fashion design school because it was still artsy, but more like, I guess it, it was, a, it was more like, of a career. Yeah. And accepted. she never used it except to make my sister and, you know, my clothes when we were young. But like, that's like a dream that She's 65 years old and she still remembers that she couldn't be a cartoonist. Oh man. Do you know, like yeah. that's wow, a life. That's a dragon that with, with her. Mm-hmm. What, what about you, Apple? Okay. You have any, I was going to say, we're right. Well, I'm glad I'm last because I, I, I'm a work in progress at the moment uh, of, of changing and realizing mistake. I, I've been very good at my whole life, life of, uh, more, more instead like you're saying I get, I get mad at myself i get depressed at myself i'm very good at blaming it on other people and the world okay and like looking at it which which it is that that's why i had to like quit watching the new it's very easy to get distracted by everything else that's going on around you and live in that world instead yeah. of looking at yourself that's true right. and i didn't realize necessarily i was doing that because you know like how did you realize you're, like you not are. ignoring my yeah more more, more just recently and probably like the last six months and especially really recently with like stepping away from a job i was at for five years where i did get kind of lazy bad eating habits like you know a lot of bad habits that went hand in hand with the same thing blame it on the cannabis industry because we're a bunch of stoners what's well, not the cannabis industry's fault it's you know, there's a lot of healthy fault. stoners out yeah, there doing the do yeah they're I a see lot magnus showing up to the cannabis industry yeah, with yeah. Buckets of gu <laughs> so, broccoli and then, and then deal it like like right now i'm a like, covid when we were, we were talking to will talking about covid and stuff one thing COVID did too, I think for most of us, is prepared you for fucking shit. Yeah. Like, like, like when shit happened, like right now waiting, my, my surgery is going to be on Thursday and this is finally, this is something that's been, I, I was dealing with this back in Vegas. We've been over here almost seven years. I was dealing with in Vegas for about two, almost a decade. Wow. About nine years of on and off with hemorrhoid issues and wow. stuff and gut problems and th this is i'm finally heading towards what 90 percent chance like resolution and 
like the COVID shit made me more prepared for this to be calm about things because mm-hmm. it could always be worse. But what, you said that you and realized it, this recently. What made you realize all that? What what made me realize? Well, mostly what made me realize it is just since the beginning of February is stepping away from a job that I was like, 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 like you said earlier to like the momentum was just pushing me. Yeah. I was not, I was not reacting to making decisions for myself. I was just going with what was thrown at me. Instead of like, because I'm always part of myself. I'm really good at scheduling, taking tasks, forethought. That was gone. It was just like, oh, shit, just tumbling over you. And you're dealing with it as it's fucking already washing over you. Instead of fucking grabbing it and organizing it ahead of time and being more sound mind. Yeah, more involved in your life instead yeah, of just it happening. And now I've, been, I've had the good fortune, bad for it lately, good fortune to have a little bit of time off and my schedule, my, you know, surgery got rescheduled. So it's given me another fucking month, which everything happens for a reason. But I've been, I've been, you guys have said it too. I've been proud of myself too. I'm making like not making myself. I'm enjoying the podcast even more through this because it's, it's, uh, that's not the right word. Like it's all I have. It's, the most important thing I have right now. Mm -hmm. And then you can move out. Yeah. Cause right now I can't do anything about my health. My health is on hold. I'm going back. Good days, bad days. They've all pretty much become bad days. Yeah. You can do things to improve your health. You just can't do something that. Like Like, like eating better, realizing things that are fucking me up when I eat them, being more sensitive towards all that. And then what, once I get through this and then heal, I just I can't imagine you brought it up Mel when you were talking to me the other day you're like just imagine when you get over this if that is gone if that is fixed and it's no longer a problem because I'd go like every three months and it'd be good for another month or two by the time it came for another treatment I'd be miserable again it was a constant it's like you're bracing it was, yourself it was in better, life better <laughs> worse better worse and now with the hope of it being fixed mm. and heading into springtime and all the stuff that's going on, I just, I have, I have high hopes and I have idea, but it's not one of those things. Like I, like I always hate, like you brought up resolutions that I've learned no. that at this age that like my dad recently, my dad's quit drinking again, but like he said this, t- this time and this time, that's why I said it that way, because that's how a lot of people that are addicts and stuff do it. Yeah. I like, quit doing dope oh, a I bunch quit of times. for the rest of my life. This is the first time I ever heard my dad in his 80 years on this planet say, I'm taking a break. He's all, I am not going to say this time that I'm never drinking again because that's too much pressure. And that's not what I mean. I need to get healthy again and then enjoy occasionally, like saying never, but cut this off forever. You know, it, yeah. it, it's healthier change is too. Hard, dude. Yeah, change is hard. And the other thing too, we talked about this last week, like with self care, it having. <laughs> Having realized like through COVID who, who what what really matters at the end of the day when everything's taken away, what matters is your home, mm-hmm. the people closest to you and everything, and having you guys and Ryder and even Darwin. Darwin's the best nurse when you're home mm-hmm. and not feeling good. He really he always is. checks he's on so you. Mm-hmm. And especially as he's getting older, he needs nursing too yeah. and <laughs> extra love and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's he, just right now is a really, really up in the air time kind of is how I feel in it's my full head. Of change. Yeah, yeah, I have so there's so much there's so many things right now, but I feel organized. I feel like I've taken a deep breath. I I feel like I'm ready for this change and to kick ass. I saw a, a post Aubrey <laughs> Marcus did. He was it was him a poem that he wrote and he was like speaking the poem spoken word style. And basically what the poem was about was like you, when you're healthy and you're doing your thing, like everything is important to you. Like money is important. Your job is important. Your friends are important. And, but when you don't have your health, that instantly becomes the most most important important. thing on the planet period. Because without that, all that other stuff doesn't matter. All the money, all the stuff, all the people, all the it shows, can't, all the can't any, matter. Your job, you, you, none anything. of it. You can't do even any your spouse. Your your number <clears throat> one. Like if you're not healthy enough to maintain your relationship. Yeah. <clears throat> so it really it stopped me. 
in my tracks. I was like, wow. Cause I've thought about the times like when my back is fucked and I can't appreciate anything or go anywhere or like when you're down with the flu even or a cold or you gotta get or better. a bad, sad mood. Yeah. That uh, can be detrimental. It, it's <laughs> all encompassing. Yeah. And so it got me thinking about springtime and change and like doing better and, and all that. And, you know, on the heels of like we, Apple said, talking about self-care last week, like you can want to do that stuff, but that doesn't mean you're going to do it. You have to make the change somehow. Okay. So uh, on the flip side, what are some things that keep you from changing the things that may be not good for you? Fear, uh, fear of being uncomfortable. That's, that's being brutally honest with myself right there. That that's number one for me, I think. Fear of being uncomfortable. Okay. Say number one for me is a straight up laziness, and that's rampant in this. Well, not just country world. What about you, Mel? My mind, my mind keeps me from doing everything. It like well, I think that's everybody. Though. Well, but like it's it can be based on fear or laziness or anything. But if I can talk myself into or out of anything. <laughs> Literally, it's get crazy. up and go right now. I don't want to. Oh, fine. Okay. And then you just do it, right? Like, but you're, I just, the, um, you mentioned Apple about like me. I said something about um, when that sickness isn't there, right? And like yeah. all this extra space. It's ever since the tail end of last year, that notion has been really heavy on my mind. I, I've mentioned before, there's certain things that my brain likes to chew on. Sometimes it's like a group of words or a sentence or a song or a paragraph or whatever. But since last year, um, going to Eugene after the Phil Les show, the notion of clearing out old bad habits or even scars from your childhood, from your teenagehood, from your early twenties, from, from from your past, but basically. When you, when those things are absent, there is space. And I never thought about emotions as taking up space in my body before. I never, even though that's. And not just space, growth. Well, yeah, you can't grow. Growth, like, there's no yeah, space. Yeah, there's no space, right? So that has, I've, I've been really thinking about that and so many, applying it to so many different aspects of my life as far as like with all this stuff with my mom, luckily, even though my mom has hurt me a lot, I'm, we're still really, I love my mom so much and we can still talk so much. And that hurt has dissipated into empathy for my mom. Mm, Yeah. And so because I'm not hurt, I have space for empathy. Yeah. 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 You made room. And now that I have empathy, there's forgiveness because that is like right on the heels of that. If you're empathetic for somebody, you're not necessarily going to hold shade or, or, or baggage over them. You're, you're going to want to move that you want to, at least in my body, I want to move that. I don't want to just feel sorry for somebody. I'm the person that likes to help somebody. So the fact that me and my mom are able to kind of like talk about this and like just have these experiences right now, um, has been very helpful, but getting back to my thought about clearing out old traumas and dramas and stories and reasons why fears, um, all that in my head, I've realized is too much Mm. for where I'm going now. And I'm doing my damnedest to try to release that this year. That's not my um uh New Year's, New resolution. Year's resol- springtime resolution or anything, but, but, but it's my overall yeah. like it's a goal that I'm I'm that's a lifeline like, lifetime goal. It's not a and a, something you've been working yeah, on. Yeah, it's something no, I've been we, working we on. We talked about this lately coming into this year. Yeah, this year is it, I can't get and it out. We've heard from a lot of our friends too going through a lot of yeah stuff this Upheaval. year. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and change. Here's the deal: it's the beginning of the week. 
it's you know every every day when you get up you get to start over or there's even in a 24 hour period there's a new hour yeah so <laughs> you know what if there's something that's been hanging you up you know try and figure out what it is and make a little bit of a change just and something like you small. said the little the little things one Dude, little thing put on your socks. so much <laughs> put on your socks i've tried to do that last couple of months well you guys have noticed because i I don't have a whole lot to do around here. So when I notice something, I do it. Yeah. Something I mean, like somebody needs to fix that. Do, oh, yeah, it. Fix do it. it. And then you feel better about it. And then it leads to growth. And that to space is there. Else. There's more space. Yeah. And then you grow <laughs> in and it's like, now I can do that. Why just the one thing? So, yeah. so do something. It's called <laughs> tilling. Do that thing. Do that thing. <laughs> All right, everybody. That I think you get the idea. So for this week, just, Take some time with yourself. Smell if the you're roses. In, you know what? If you, and if you're in a good place, celebrate keep that Keep going, enjoy. man. Yeah. yeah. Kudos. It doesn't, doesn't always going. have to be doom and gloom. Like, no. you can enjoy where you're at, too. But, hey, if you're not, do do one small thing. Yeah, do and, that little thing for you. Trust me, it'll help. It'll and do make one you small better. thing and also celebrate it. Yeah. Okay? Celebrate it. Acknowledge it. Right. Yep. That That's it. That's, I think we'll leave it there. Yeah. So we will be back on Friday with another episode of No Simple Road. And until then, here's what we want you to do. Smile a stranger. Pet a cute little doggy or kitty. Safety third. Do just a little thing and celebrate and it. This I'm going to tell you this. If you're somewhere like we are where there's not a lot of sunshine, or even if you are, get yourself some fresh flowers. Cut them up. <laughs> put them on your table so when you walk in, you can see springtime in your home. Guarantee you it'll brighten up your demeanor. Your It'll make you smile. It'll just do something for you that you didn't expect. Change a picture frame to update your mind frame. Yeah. yeah. We love you guys. Wash your hands. <laughs> Safety third. Hydrate. We'll love see you on Friday. Peace. tell you about the april may 2023 issue of relics magazine features a dave matthews band cover story with additional articles and interviews with the national graham nash wayne shorter alo ivan neville our friend eric krasno and stanton moore marty stewart and much more check out the latest version of relics and subscribe now at relics.com slash dmb thanks relics Hey, this is Steve Choi, host of the Musicians Guild podcast, part of the Sound Talent Media Podcast Network. Within the four walls of the Musicians Guild, we'll be discussing the habits, idiosyncrasies, experiences, and general psychology of my friends and peers, all involved with music in various capacities. Listen and subscribe at soundtalentmedia.com.